name is Sarah Gitahi, as you can see there, from Financial Freedom for Families. Now, Financial Freedom for Families is a program of uh, CMS Africa. Now, CMS Africa has a link to the CMS, Church Mission Society, which I think most of us are familiar with, perhaps when we did some history. Uh, it's that organization that brought uh, those missionaries uh, that first brought the word uh, to this part of the world, you know, the Dr. Ludwig Kraff and, and all those others. Um, so CMS uh, Africa is a mission agency uh, and runs various programs. And so this is one of the programs. So they have various programs targeting, you know, various audiences. Um, there's uh, one for leaders, there's one for youth, uh, there's one for women. And then this one is uh, specifically on managing family finances or personal finances. So just uh, by way of um, introduction. So today I'll just share a little bit of uh, the content that we cover in our in our program, which is called the Financial Freedom Family. And we shorten it as F4. So you'll hear as I go, I mean, I'll probably just be calling it F4, uh, which is what uh, we fondly call it. Now, um, I'm aware of the sessions that you have had so far, and I know you got quite a bit of detail from the previous two speakers, especially in the area of personal financial planning. And so I thought that today, uh, perhaps we can pause um, so that I want for this session to be more interactive and maybe a more reflective um, uh, session. Um, but maybe even before I get to that, because the uh, first I did indicate that uh, a number of people had uh, expressed interest uh, in this particular topic to do with uh, finances and money. I'm hoping some of those people who are interested in that happen to be in our audience. Uh, and if it's okay, maybe if I may just confirm with you, Pastor, perhaps, you know, I believe they can unmute or maybe communicate by chat. That would be in order? Yes, that is in order. Okay. It would be. Yes, it would be just nice to hear. Um, why was this topic of interest? What were the concerns? I hope at least one of us was here, <laughs> was, was one of the ones that uh, made the request. Um, Okay, then maybe even as we, we you know, as we consider that, because uh, like I said, I was hoping to make this uh, a bit more interactive and to sort of like have a conversation, or I see somebody has put something there. This is from Gabriel. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, oh, this is good to hear. Uh, Gabriel says that CMS sponsored him. Oh, this is this is good news. Um, through his entire high school education and part of my college. Oh, great. <laughs> Great. Thank you. It's really good to have you, uh, Gabriel. Um, thank you for that. Uh, so, um, I, so, as I was saying, so it may be even as we think about that, because I was hoping to just ask a few questions, uh, like uh, was advertised, the topic was to be on biblical stewardship. And maybe uh, if I could request for right to share? Yeah. The presentation. Yes. Okay. yes let, me, let me just do that now yeah so so even as a pastor does that what comes to mind when you hear stewardship thank you for that so what comes to mind That word there, when you hear that word, what comes to mind? I like, yeah, thank you, Gabriel. Gabriel says taking care of something or people. Thanks for that, that's a good start. Um, Yes, and, and, and he also added responsibility. Uh, I like what Joseph Odong is also saying here. He says response management 
response management. Now that sounds interesting. Joseph, I don't know what you have in mind when you say response. If you could, uh, I hope we're able to, uh, and maybe you could still continue to share in the chat. And maybe responsible management. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Now let me add a twist to that question. What about when you hear biblical stewardship? Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, let me ask uh, an alternative question. And I hope, can you see the, you can see the PowerPoint? Just to yes, yes, we can see the PowerPoint. Oh, right. You're able to see, yeah? Um, yes. So is, is that managing God's way or managing using the Bible as a manual? Yes, <laughs> thank you for that. So now you have brought in uh, the Bible um and you have brought in uh, god but because then i was going to ask huh? how did the world come into existence what do we say yeah this this is one of those where i yeah, have no answer is right or wrong uh, and it's not a trick question so i guess Yeah. So uh, we know that, uh, you know, the world was created by God. And so being the creator, you know, God owns everything. Because he's in control of, and he's in control of everything. Um, and as the owner, it means he has a responsibility to maintain, sustain, protect, and perpetuate. So I want to get now into another discussion on the ownership. Um for us to get it clear that God owns it all, because being the creator, he knows why, he knows his purposes. Um, but for discussion, and I'm really hoping some of us will come in now. I'm hoping there's more of us now. I'm trying to see if we have increased in number. Do we all agree that God owns it all? I think, Pastor, you're also welcome to, to share. <laughs> Not your questions. Adult learning, there's no right or wrong answer. Because then I was going to ask us, if, if, if God didn't own, who else could own? Any thoughts? Okay, then let me ask some leading questions. Do, and like I say, this is to be a reflective. Oh, sorry, I had missed. There was some chat here. Yeah. Um, yeah, somebody has a feed there. Ask. Ask, and I believe that that means um, we, as man, could be owners. If we are the owners, uh, or if I am the owner, what would be the consequences of that? Of that, or what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, Coach Pastor and Coach. I use both, but I wonder when you have those two titles, which comes first, is it Pastor or Coach? Yeah, uh, he says, but I always struggle with control when I have the money. Yeah, I like that because actually you're getting us now uh, into the next next section. Uh, of the presentation. So God owns it all, which means everything, everything belongs to God because he's the creator. Um, I think one of the things I may have forgotten to share, uh, Pastor, is uh, for people to bring Bibles. Uh, like, uh, you know, like we shared, this course is a biblical stewardship and we make a lot of reference 
uh, to the Bible. So you'll be seeing that shortly. Um, but let me ask, we say, because we said that God owns everything. And everything means everything. If I may ask, and maybe Pastor, you can start as well. Uh, right now, I saw like you were seated. I hope you're able to admit and interact with me, or do you prefer the chat? No, I'm here. Okay, yes. It looked like you were seated <laughs> when I saw you earlier. Yes, I am so seated. What are you seated on? <laughs> I'm seated on a seat. On a seat. So who owns that seat? Who does that seat belong to? It is in my office, so I think it belongs to me now. It belongs to you now. <laughs> uh, we just said everything belongs to God. <laughs> yeah, because it is important that this that we get this um, right before even we get into the issue of stewardship. I believe you have a phone. Mm -hmm. Who does the phone belong to? I should say God, but I have it in my hands every day, every time. So it, the, 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 the tendency is for me to just think that it is mine. So earlier also, I think when we were just waiting, I had a, a child or some children in the background. I don't know. I want to imagine that the person is still um, on, 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 on in the session. Because then I was going to ask whose children are they? Um... And the reason I think I'm just emphasizing this, and I like what you have shared, that yes, you know, but because it's in your possession, you feel like it, it should be you. Um, it's important for us to appreciate that everything belongs to God. And so even as we're here, we're just here for a season and for, and for a reason, for God's purposes. And that we should never forget that we are stewards. And when we do, sometimes then we start to get into problems and we start to have some struggle. Um, I think maybe I'll just pick this. I had really hoped uh, for us to get into some interaction, but um, I think let me just keep this because actually even just, uh, you know, taking from what uh, Pastor has just shared, <laughs> and I think somebody else had also indicated on the chat about control. Yes, the issue is ultimately one of control. It's about who is controlling or have we let God actually control us. And, we see that Satan desires the rule of a man by seducing us with false security. Now, money is very tricky because it does give us that false sense of power. In fact, I have a colleague who normally likes to say it, it, it gives you that let there be power because we imagine that if I have money and if there's something that I thought of that I would want to have, um, I feel like I can, I can say, you know, let there be whatever that is that I was wishing for. And if it's something like a car, I feel like if I have money, then I can make it happen. And in fact, depending on the amount of money I have, I could even choose the model or the color or what it is that I want. And so in that sense, money then tends to become a false god. Um, so at F4, even as we're doing the training and why the emphasis on the biblical stewardship, uh, is because we are saying as stewards, because everything, and I hope that that point has has um, has sunk, and it's important even as we continue reflecting. And like I have said, I was wishing that I was, I thought that perhaps it's nice for us to sort of like step back, even from where we have been, to sort of like reflect on these things. So we talk about not the ten percent; we start to be a hundred percent belongs to God, because everything is His, and I've just been appointed. Um, as a steward. So, so that therefore the emphasis is not so much on prosperity, but on stewardship. Yeah, on stewarding what is God. So we say that the issue is more of control. Uh, and let's get into some of the ways that money controls. How does money control? Um, we say that money controls by default. Yeah, it says that non-functioning apparatus demands most attention. Um, a story is told uh, of a pastor who had a car that was not in very good condition. So all the time he was permanently trying to, you know, to work on it. It was either the mechanics so or it's broken down. So he was spending so much time on it that one would even ask, 
what is it that he does? So if I was to ask, you know, if you're meeting this person always, you know, at the mechanics so or always uh, stopping by the roadside, uh, with his, you know, phone not open and trying to fix it, then you might wonder, what is it that he does? Or another example is, um, if anybody has experienced a toothache, you know how it is eh? when you have that toothache, that uh, you are, you know, it really demands so much attention that you're not able to do uh, other things. So the same way about money. If you're constantly uh, thinking about money, then uh, you can say that money is in control. And it'll be because perhaps um, there's something not right or something amiss in terms of the way you're managing the money. And, you know, it has to do with, um, are we very, very clear on the perspective, on that the stewardship perspective? Because the minute we go off, then there's a problem. But money also controls because of desperation. And I think, you know, we, we have seen it, especially perhaps in this part uh, of the world, uh, in developing countries, where people even have been taken advantage of. And yet we do know very well what it is that the word of God tells us. Um, that uh, we should not let the worries of this world and the peacefulness of, of wealth and the desires um, come in and choke the word because then it will be unfruitful and I think that one I cannot ever emphasize. Um, we like to also quote um, this prayer by this man called Abu in Proverbs uh, 30 where he says two things I ask of you O Lord do not refuse before do not refuse me before I die. Uh, where Abu is saying in Proverbs that uh, to not have too much either to have too little but to have enough that I may be content. I believe that's familiar. So, but how else does money control? Money control through deception. And we know that the Bible says you cannot serve two masters. And the two masters uh, is, is God or mammon. And mammon is really money and possessions, which Satan uses. Um, but money can also control through myths and religious traditions. And especially in this part of the world, there'll be all sorts of family traditions, all sorts of family beliefs. Um, but we are called to watch out and to be on guard against all kinds of things. Um, so I would like to give us a test. And like I said today, you know, I was thinking perhaps we step back and just do some reflection to see how is it here. Um, what is our perspective about money and that we have the right perspective that we may not forget that we are stewards. So how can you tell what really controls you? I think I may get some insights from the somebody how can you tell okay so one way is if money is your treasure oh sorry i've just seen something coming through in the chat here from Katrina. yeah <laughs> the pain you feel when giving yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, and that's one of the things I'll have here. Thanks for that. I'll welcome others can can share. So is money your treasure? Meaning that you're constantly, constantly thinking about your money, uh, about money or things to do with money. Um, if money is your treasure then uh, you really want to think again and just reflect and see, have you lost the focus? Have you forgotten that you are just uh, a steward? Yeah? And remember, the Bible tells us to not store up for ourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust will destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Another question to ask ourselves, you know, as we reflect on this, do you have an excessive obsession to get wealth? Because then that is all that you'll be focusing on and all your attention will be going to that. And this... Sorry, is somebody asking something? Oh, that's Joram. Joram, how are you? Good. Yeah. Okay. I hope we're together and I hope that you can hear me well. Yes, I, I, I hear you very well. Okay. You had a question? Nope. Okay. All right. So yeah, so you you really 
want to think about it um, in terms of that excessive consumption? Is that all that you're running after? Um, do you worry about money? Um, because remember the Bible tells us to not worry about our life, what we will eat, what we will do, or about our body, what we will wear. And we ask, is, is not life more important than food? In the body more important than clothes? So the minute we are worried, the minute our main concern um, is, is money, and you know we are told that there's a way to know where your concern or where your treasures are or where your heart is. Is they say by looking at your expenses and by looking at your diary or your calendar or your time, how you're spending your time. And I just invite us, even um, beyond this session, to just reflect on that. Just looking to see where is our money going? Where is our attention going to? What are we spending our time on? Or at what point, uh, I see Joseph here is asking, at what point can you say one is obsessed towards wealth? And I think that's just what I was explaining in terms of that's what you're thinking of. And even if you take an audit of your expenses, uh, which is something, and I know that as you're covering personal financial planning, there's the issue of the budget. Uh, and even in our program, one of the things we really emphasize is on keeping the records uh, and reviewing the records, just to see, are they, whatever you're spending your money in, is it in line with your values? Uh, but also your time, you know? Where are you spending most of your time? So I know normally we will talk about having a diary, uh, but we also challenge ourselves to do an audit of our time. Where are we spending most of our time? Thank you for that. Uh, so another thing that could be an indicator is uh, being in debt. And we do talk a lot even in our course uh, with debt and you know what the Bible will say about debt. Um, not saying that all, all debt is bad debt, but uh, uh, to be very careful um, to not be living. Above our means. Then, uh, are you joyfully giving yourself, your time, and your material possessions to others? <laughs> and I like what uh, Pastor thinks about the challenge that he may have every now and then. Um, hey, Jora. Jora, um, share here. And so, um, yeah, thank you for that question. And that's something that we cover even uh, as we go through our content because we also do talk about investment. I think the only thing is that we draw on principles which are in the Bible. I hope you can still be um, in the Um So, um, the battlefield is in the heart. It's in the heart. Uh, and in Exodus 20 17, Told, you shall not covet, covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, uh, or and above all, um, to guard our that hope maybe if there may be any comments oh and I just noticed that one of my colleagues who I saw was able to join us this evening actually I've just seen him uh his name is Eric Eric Sana Eric I don't know that you've been with us throughout, but Karibu. So you'd like us to ask questions? Oh, yes. Yeah. So like I said, yeah, it, it was for it to be more of a reflective um, uh, session today. But we do carry out the, the training where we get into a bit more detail. And um, for us, even as we 
tackle the personal finance and the investment, we are guided by the biblical principles. So we tailor it to that. And the and the the understanding that we are stewards, we are called to be stewards. So from a stewardship perspective. Yeah, so I think the floor is open. Anyone who has any question can ask uh, can ask Sarah. I think I am I'm together with uh, Joram. Uh, I'm also aging, so I am I'm starting yes. to feel insecure that I've not fully invested in old age. Yes. Um Mm -hmm. Maybe you can help us reflect. Oh yes, on on on, uh, you know, it's it's also about where our trust is and and, and trusting in God, um, because being the provider. And I think there's a question I had asked about if God does not own, then who else can own? And you know, when we think that we are the ones who own everything, then it means we are we are really restricting ourselves to a small circle, because then God owns everything. So which means. Because he's he's if we, we shouldn't restrict ourselves. Um, um what it is that we have because we can make the provision. Um but of course then as stewards we are also called to our that you have had where a lot uh, was actually captured on that. So we also do incorporate that where we you know we'll work on our goals. Uh, and then the investments, and then you know, looking at various investments, and of course diversifying, um, even as as one gets to old age. And and I know I see, I believe quite a bit was covered uh, on that, and we will get into more details even in the training. Okay, people, let's ask questions. Let's uh, think through. Wow. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? That is that is Joram or Kevin? This is Joram. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, what I would love to say is uh, thank you so much. And uh, today's topic is very different because the past mm -hmm. speakers, uh, they have been teaching more of we need to have a vision for life. Mm -hmm. Uh, we think on how we can able to invest. Mm -hmm. And they were very practical on the steps mm -hmm. that we need to take. Mm -hmm. And maybe taking care of our expenditures and income and being good uh, stewards of money. Mm -hmm. But today it's very different. It's more coming on, which I totally love it and I believe, trusting in God. And I like all the scripture. It's it's like like for me the 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 scripture that says we should not worry. Mm. But uh, I, I maybe I can share where my fears comes from. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to ask like you know it depends with where like I know it's it's good not to worry, but it also depends from where you are at age. Like mm -hmm. me, after, like I, I, I was involved in an accident and uh, from that time my life changed. I spared more than, than what I used to spend. You know what I mean? Mm 
and this this brought so many worries in my life and i feel like yo i'm aging maybe i still have young children i need to i i need to invest i need somebody who who tell me how to invest and who guide me on how to invest so that maybe when i'm not i'm not very active yes. i can be able to take care of my family basically i'm i'm looking my motive for investing because after you teach i i, I try to bury myself what is the motive of my investing is it because of fear mm -hmm. of, of course life has a degree of fear because i'm human mm -hmm. yeah but when when mm -hmm. i was very strong and young and i had my i didn't have lots of responsibilities i i didn't have any fear life was so simple but now i worry of my children if in case i'm not able to to go to work and work so hard how can i make sure i'll support them until they finish school so that, that that's i'm asking more of a does not worrying and trusting in god mm -hmm. uh, kind of a uh, mm, leaves me because you say that we also need to like like what do you think mostly uh, anytime like now it's very different for me most of the time i think ah my kids are still i i think about my future so much mm -hmm. and money is invest money and investment is attached to my future mm -hmm. so that that has been my struggle but maybe that is personal depending on what i've gone through and where am i at age but has been a real battle mm -hmm. in Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joram, uh, for sharing. And I'm really sorry to hear you know, about the accident and that changed the circumstances. But thank you for even being very open uh, to share. And, and maybe let me just um, clarify that the, the, you know, what you, the, there's a lot that you had covered in terms of uh, you know, the, the finances and investment and creating the vision. I think uh, the pose that I was suggesting today is to say that even as we do all those things, let us look back and remember that we are stewards. And mm -hmm. that all these things actually do belong to God. So even mm -hmm. in whatever it is that we are doing, to remember to seek the wisdom of God and to remember to also do things according to the, uh, the owner to whom we will eventually have to account to. I think perhaps that's where the pose was coming from. But I hear you and, 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 and I hear what you're saying, and it's true. You know, as humans, I mean, there will be those concerns. Um, so they're very valid. Um, but to say yes, that there's various investments. Um, and I think increasingly now you realize it's important actually also to, to diversify and get into various things. So there is a place for that. Just that even as we're doing that and we're drawing up that investment plan, as we're working on that vision, just to ensure that it is aligning with God's purposes uh, for our lives. Thank you. That, that was uh, yeah. Eric, I don't know whether you may be able to. What you maybe want to add something to John? Oh, thank you, Sarah, and thank you for the session. I believe. Um, for me, just to add on uh, what you just shared, it's the base. The, the the bottom line here is looking at ourselves as stewards, and we understand the point at which Joram is, and I agree with him. Um, when it comes to worry, it all depends on the situation that you that sometimes you are in, and uh, as human, when you look at our situation, sometimes. Uh, we we feel that it's 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 a bit tricky for us to to get through. But the what we are we are communicating this evening is just to know as we plan, as we have those structures. At the end of the day, uh, God still is in control and is the one who controls everything. So there is a bit of thinking about it and there's also the bit of worry i usually separate the two because worry has to do with uh, a psychological 
and ease and happiness is just a psychological if, uh, effect in your mind that you are very unhappy and uh, sad to a point that it can cause, it can slowly by slowly lead to depression. And that's what God actually tells us not to worry. But it does not tell us not to think about it or to plan for it, but it tells us not to worry. So there's a difference between worry and thinking about it. So for Joram, yes, it's okay to think about your future. Of course, as a father, you need to plan for your kids. But uh, the worry bit is what now uh, God tells you, you know, he's the ultimate uh, <clears throat> in control of everything. So if you leave it to him, he's going to take care of it. So there's a structure to it. And I think that's what uh, the previous, I think, speakers had uh, alluded to it in terms of how we need to set up goals and to set up uh, structures in which we can be able to invest and to be able to, you know, get to uh, reap some uh, resources for our children. And in terms of investing, uh, again, uh, like you have said, uh, when we slowly by slowly start aging, we start also having that aspect of fear. Uh, there's a saying that uh, that says when you start now hitting the 40s and the 50s, that's when you realize that <clears throat> There's very little that you have saved and the worry comes in. But even as we age, we need to look at uh, what is our goal and what do we want to achieve with this investment? Because it all boils down to what you want to achieve at the end of the day. Now, once you have set up that goal and what you want to achieve, it's easy now to break down into various investments that you can get yourself into. So uh, that, that's just basically what, what I, I wanted to add. But... This topic is very ideal, I think, for all of us. Even as we build wealth, as we get into riches, the ultimate goal about control will always check in. And at the end of the day, it will always be about, is it God in control of your life or is it money? Because it's easier to, be, to say God is in control when you have little, but it becomes harder and harder when you have a lot to actually acknowledge that is God who is in control. And I think as I end, I'll just share a scripture in Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18, which says that, uh, I paraphrase that, you know, we'll get to a point and say, it's by the power of my hand that has produced for me this wealth. But you should always remember that it's God who gives us the ability to make wealth. So as we make wealth, as we build riches, let's remember that at the end of the day, it's God who enable us to achieve all these goals. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you for, for that addition, Eric. Yeah. And maybe I can now hand it back over to Pastor. I think for me, one of the uh, highlights for tonight is uh, when, you, when you ask me about the seat. <laughs> Because really, I, I think we go through life without thinking who really owns what. And we almost uh, are on a default mode, like like we own everything, like like everything ni, ni, near to. Mm -hmm. And so many of us maybe don't even have a, a place where God comes in on anything, not just on money. Like, you know, like it's easy for me to say this bottle of water is mine. Uh, it's easy for me to say uh, the children are mine. This wife is mine. You know, um, and and never to really think like the the God is actually in the picture. Um. So question is, how do we um bring this into our consciousness, uh, every day? Uh, how do we build this consciousness that the the money I have, the clothes I have, the books I have, the job I have, it actually is God's, and that I am actually a steward. How do I cult How do I culture my mind? will think like that because if I start thinking like that, then that would then inform my behaviors and my choices. But if I'm not consciously thinking about it, then my choices are being dictated about by something else. So maybe you could um, help us reflect on that if you don't mind. You know, it is, um, it actually, yes, does call for a lot of unlearning <laughs> and relearning. And it's, it's a thing about guarding your heart. And I think it's really, 
a thing of prayer and really coming for the Lord and really saying that he has to be like this. But I have to say, it's still a day-to-day journey. It's an everyday thing. Um, because I think that's the only way, only by going to him, only, you know, by prayer and just, you know, uh, opening up for the Lord to come and do that within me. Um, but uh, I think uh, maybe, you know, like as, as one reflects and as, you know, getting deeper to even as we're doing uh, the session, we get into more detail about those principles, what those principles are. Um, you know, in terms of how, even as we are planning those investments, how are we going to do those investments? If it's some of the things that we've done, or sometimes we might find ourselves in, you know, in a financial crisis, what has got us there? And how can we get out of there? Yeah, so it's a, it's a day-to-day thing. Okay. And I know this is one of Eric's uh, favorite areas. So I know he has said in conclusion, but he would have something else to add. You know, I, think. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah. Eric, do you, do you want to add something? Because I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, having, I'm having a lot of other questions, like two other questions okay. to think through. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first question I've asked is, how do we culture ourselves eh, to really think mm-hmm. God owns everything we have, except including our money? Okay. There's an angle you also brought, Eric, when you talk about it is um, when you have little money, Mm-hmm. It is easier for you to think like, you know, God owns this. So it's easier to, because it's even if you're giving, the givings are not much. Uh, mm-hmm. If you are, if you, for example, if you're tithing or if you are even giving your offerings, they don't look like mm-hmm. it's much when you have little. So it's easy to say God owns everything and to give it to him. But when you start having a lot of money, then yeah. the mm-hmm. amounts are significant when you have to give them. And for me, yeah. I don't know about the other people in this group, but for me, I always feel a lot of pain. When I have to partner yes. with a lot of money, whether I'm helping someone or whether I'm giving it at church. Mm-hmm. So the question, the other question now, the follow-up question is, how do I guard my heart against things like greed? Um, mm. Because I, I remember a couple of years ago, I read a scripture in 1 Timothy 6, I think verse mm-hmm. number 10, 10, 11, there where it talks about uh, the love of money is the root of all evil. And yes. some having lasted after it and gone after it, have pierced themselves with so many, like, you know, these um, uh, arrows. Eh? Yes. Uh, uh, then opportunity, and, uh, the, the Bible talks about, you know, tell the rich people not to put their confidence in money, uh, yeah. but, you know, uh, trust in God and all that, and then to do good. So I'm, I'm asking myself, um, it's because I, I have noticed the same thing with my life. When I didn't have much, uh, it was very yeah. easy for me to give. When I started having more, uh, then I started struggling even more, but I also started desiring more. Okay. Yeah. Sure, so, sure. so how do I, how do I culture my mind to know God owns all things, but two, how do I also guard my heart that my heart is not actually greedy and controlled by money, so that I'm not able to then appropriate it in the way as a good steward I should I should do. All right. Th- th- thanks for for your concern. <clears throat> I think what I can uh, allude to that is one, uh, to the, on the aspect of uh, God owning, uh, how it says you need to keep thinking and confessing it. You know, the, the question that like Sarah has asked, whose chairs does it belong to? You know, uh, it's, at, at this time, your mind is still programmed, it's, it's mine. But slowly by slowly, you need to reprogram your mind and start thinking in a direction that it go, it belongs to God. So even in your conversation, the way you talk, uh, you start now inculcating those things by, by saying the car that God has given me to steward is ABCD or the children that God has given me to steward, they have graduated in school. You know, as you continue speaking it, you and thinking, they start form that thought, that pattern start forming in you, and you build slowly by slowly build that character. So uh, you are just relearning from the aspect of holding and thinking that you own to a point now you know it's not yours, it belongs to God. So even the way you uh, attach to it now, you start loosening because you know it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to God. On the second question about um, the, 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 the money aspect and the, and the giving and, uh, and the pain that you're talking about, 
I usually give an example of, you know, uh, when we finish maybe high school or no, let me say campus and we are trusting God for a job, we pray to God for a job, we trust God for a business and uh, we surrender everything to him and we know that he's the one in charge of everything when it's at the initial point and uh, <clears throat> when it's starting to grow. That's, and little by little, I think when we start seeing the growth coming in, we start shifting the focus. It's, it's like uh, you pray for God to give you a job and then you give, the job comes in. You, you, you are diligent to pray for the work but one month, two months, a year later, you start, uh, you know, when you when ukizoya, if I can put that word, ukizoya, you start feeling, ah, I think it's my strategy, it's my effort, you know, it's my game that is helping me achieve A, B, C, D. And that's where now the God control start, start uh, going off and we start feeling that we do it. And uh, and and the, the the other thing is, you know, when when now resources start coming in, you start now thinking of, you know, it's the way I'm playing this deal. It's the way I'm pushing this contract. And you forget he's the one who started at the initial stage. And now the the aspect of giving those resources, you also start questioning. You know, if you give 10% of your income, when you are giving it, when you are earning 10,000, giving 1,000, it's easy. But the question comes in when you get that contract or you get that business or your business grows to a point now it's in million and you need to give hundreds of thousand or a million shilling, you start feeling it's, it's, it's my effort. Why should I give that a lot? So it's a conscious thing that you need to cultivate as you journey along. And that's why I was talking about the Deuteronomy because God was reminding the children of Israel they should constantly continue. Rem- as they grow, they should constantly remember that it's God, it's God, it's God, it's God. And one of the best way to keep reminding yourself as you grow is to remember where you have come from. Where has God brought you from? He brought you maybe from nothing and now you're making millions. So you need to remember then and now start reflecting now. So I should not be proud or I should not start now questioning why am I giving this a lot? I should remember there's a time I didn't have, but God has given me. So I don't need to hold to that. So these are psychological things. These are things that we need to keep cultivating. Of course, with prayer and reading the scripture, the, bit by bit will to help us now to have that uh, mindset of God owning. The aspect of guarding against greed, that's, that again, it's, it's human. I, I, I think in the aspect of money, there are two things that people are always, uh, battling with one is greed and number two is fear fear like uh, joram has uh, alluded to you know you start feeling that you have not invested you what will happen to your children what will happen to tomorrow that's the fear bit and once you start making money and start making the millions then there's the greed that creeps in i should make more and more and more for the greed i would say this there's, there's there's a question uh, uh, in a different session that I was in that was asked and, and I've always thought through over and over again and the question is what is enough what is enough because uh, as a person if that uh, statement is not defined then you always be desiring for more and more and you will you know the uh, with money you will never it's like chasing after the wind you will always desire the billions and the billions and the billions. But uh, the scripture says that uh, godly contentment is great. Is, I think it says it's, it's a great gain. So you need to get to a point and uh, start asking yourself, okay, even if I'm chasing after wealth and riches, what is enough for me? At what point can I say, okay, now 
this is enough for me now then um from this point onwards now how do i handle that so that's a, a caution for for the aspect of greed and also the aspect of you know uh putting the biblical principles into it so that you you are not uh compromising on scripture just to make well i think that that in a way can help if i can answer to your questions thank you very much eric uh very grateful just uh i don't know if there's anybody who has any 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 more question uh to ask sarah and uh, and uh and and um, eric <clears throat> any reflections from those of us who are on the on the platform hello everyone yes hello Christine. yes yes we can hear you yes uh, i'm so grateful for this session yeah for me it's uh i think my takeaway uh, today is uh, uh what where should i put my confidence in or to whom should i put my confidence in uh, is it God or, or, or money that even uh, when I'm uh, investing or doing everything possible to ensure that I secure maybe my future, my children's future, but the bottom line, where is my confidence? Is it in, in, in money or is it in, in God? I think this has been very, very helpful to me. Thank you, Christine. That's well put. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other person's reflections? We are uh, coming to the top of the hour. Yes. Mm, Joram. Yes, please. Yeah, I think this is a paradigm shift. And uh, I, I really needed to hear this. Because uh, fear, there is always that fear. Yeah. And uh, I like I liked the, the Deuteronomy 8.18, that do not forget God is the one who gives you power to produce wealth. And I think uh, I need to hear this many times. I need to I need to listen to this YouTube again, 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 and again until it fights that fear in me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other uh, person who has any other thought? Before I ask uh, Sarah to give us a final thought and also share with us about the programs and how we can benefit beyond this uh, beyond this uh, uh, Zoom. Okay, um, so I am I'm really grateful for this evening. Uh, this has been a very wonderful uh, conversation. Thank you, Sarah, for taking that angle. Uh, like Joram has said, it's a paradigm shift uh, for us it's because sometimes we just get into the practical bits of things and we don't reflect really at the heart level uh, where what is. And just thinking, uh, to me, I'm still thinking about the chair, uh, thinking about th that this chair is not mine really, it belongs to God, um, but that what can make me not to want to have it belong to God is either I'm afraid that I won't, I won't have anything or maybe because I'm greedy uh, I want it all for myself, and those can actually hinder me from uh, being able to really put uh, God at the place where he's supposed to be. So I, I'm really grateful that this has come out nicely uh, for me, that we need to really avoid both extremes of fear and uh, the extremes of greed and have God at the at the center of, uh, of our interaction with anything, uh, not just money, but really anything, that God is really the source 
and a sustainer of all things. And that's really, really powerful. So thank you again for coming on board to just share that with us. Uh, I want to ask if you don't mind to, to, do, to share with us our final thought, but also before that, that or maybe after that, uh, you can actually share your final thoughts, Kwanzaa, then, uh, mm -hmm. then you tell us a little bit about your program uh, after that. Okay. Yeah, so once again, thank you very much even for that opportunity. And I also want to extend my gratitude even to my colleague, Eric, uh, for having been um, on, the, you know, on, the, on the session with us. Um, actually, those two things are linked. Um, the reason why I chose to speak on this topic first and to sort of like build on it on stewardship is because we say it is foundational. Um, so we run a, a four-part four session which can be done online uh, or physically. So it's a four-part session where we first start by getting into the details of the biblical stewardship and just exploring that. Uh, and then we talk about the principles of creating this world, you know, and those principles will be doing. So we get into the savings, uh, you know, that we need to work, because work is part of it, investments and the planning. Uh, and then we also talk about debt, even in the sessions and financial crisis. And then the other thing that we tackle also is relationship because those also come in, you know, um, in, in our role as steward. Because as we say, steward is not just over our money, it's not just over the treasure, but also talent uh, and also our time. And so it's an all encompassing thing, this stewardship thing. But this really is foundational because what we say is then it becomes difficult for us to get into those other things until this has sunk properly. So that session, yes, can be done. Uh, we can do it online. We prefer to do it monthly with one once a month session. And then in between, we have a lot of practical work that each individual participant needs to work on. So like I said, you know, the records, you know, just doing that or this fast recording everything um, that you're spending so that when we come next time, then we are reflecting how are my expenses and what do my expenses indicate in terms of where my treasure is and also a bit of audit on where you're spending your time uh, as a steward and where you're spending uh, your money. Um, so we do it that way. We prefer to do it one month apart, uh, but sometimes we can consider to be fortnightly. but one month apart is really the nice one so that also we have the monthly records, which, so the cost goes building. So even as we're learning um, these things, we are also practically working on our personal uh, finances so that by the end of it all, we have, you know, at least we've clarified our goals and we have clarified the way we want to do it, the way we want to manage our money um, according to God's purposes in, in accordance with God's will. Uh, so in a nutshell, that's it. Uh, 